Hey kids, it's Dresser James with Dresser Explains. We're looking at Serato Sukhtops. So Serato, sor Horn, Suka, Croc, Opsia, Face. So essentially, Crocodile, Horn, Face. Uh, there is an, another, I know there's another model of this animal. It's, um, I think, I'm sure Safari or whoever. Different, there's like scientific toy companies. But this is one in Jurassic World. It's in all the stores, Target, Walmart, etc. So I thought I should talk about it. And so, uh, same rules apply. It's just one. There's no newer or older. It's just one. But over here I have the animals it live with. And over here I have its family tree. It's a, it's a big thing going on there. So, with the official scissors of Jurassic James, we are now going to free the beast. And... And like, right there. So the easy part is removing the actual figure. The hard part is the tail, which is in the back. So this is going to be great for audio again. Not that painful, actually. Let's see. We're going to put same pulls. Just put that there. And so it is born. Okay, so outside of the obvious uh, Jurassic Parkification of this animal, I mean, is it, it is a nice Spinosaurus relative, or actually a baryonic relative. Uh, one thing to point out with it is it hits all the major points. It has three fingers that are looking... I mean, I, th I think they get it now. The palm, the palm, three fingers, they're, they're there. The feet, of course, uh, a little bit small, for uh, my opinion, but to be fair, they didn't find a feet on the skeleton, so hey, what do I know? Um, the name of Serata... Okay, so basically, I'll point out, they discovered, essentially, the very tip of the nose, some of the bones around here, and tail vertebra. And so the question, of course, is how did you get all of that from just that, that, and this? Well, first and foremost, it is a member of Spinosaurus. They have a very distinctive set of features. And actually, it was next to it was found, not next to it, like in the same area. Um, this one's called Serato... Sukops. There's one called Riparian Venator. A Riparian is an environment with, like think of, you know, like rivers and streams, and there's like veg low vegetation growing. That's a Riparian. So Riparian Venator is another kind of Spinosaurus found in the Spinosaurid found in the same area, and based on their anatomy, the few bones we have that are similar, they compared them and said they're even both different enough. And to give you a perspective on this, say you found a human skeleton and a chimp skeleton. Now we as humans know chimps are really, really different, but let's say some future paleontologists that are primarily bird base found these bones and they're like, well, these are similar, but then they realize that we walk upright and they don't like that kind of difference in the skeleton. Right? So that's the first thing to point out here. So like all spinosaurus, it is a carnivore, uh, and primarily not only a carnivore, but it's mainly fish. What we would see based on the, the tooth design and everything else too, uh, spinosaurus teeth aren't like T-Rex that are crushing like that or slicing like carnosaurs. The idea here is that this kind of tooth is for puncturing like catching fish. In fact, some spinosaurid teeth are often confused with crocodile teeth because they have very similar diets and similar living environments. I mean, you'll see where you find spinosaurids, you find crocodiles usually, right? Um, but yet, even then, they're niche partitioning. They're doing different jobs in the environment. They're both eating fish, but different ways, maybe different kinds of fish. And so, as far as the figure goes, the tail goes... That is loud. Okay, so... Um, the tail goes up, and it does that. I imagine like a rock like a rock and roll, like headbanging kind of thing. Uh, and so, it has this kind of tall neural spine. And again, they, they found some of the tail, some tail bones kind of based some of that on, but Spinosaurus, not all of them have tall spines, as their name implied. Um, I'll go over Spinosaurus in a minute. But the main thing is this guy's found in early Cretaceous England, and it's the exact same time as its relative, close relative, Baryonyx. But it's living, it's found on the island of Wexix, which is a, the Wexix Formation, sorry, Isle of Wright, sorry, the Isle of Wright, the Wexix Formation. So this is early Cretaceous period, about 128 million years ago. So this is before T-Rex. This is after Brachiosaurus, right? Um, in the environment, we have sauropod long necks, but there are no toys of those. Sauropods are a weird set of dinosaurs for toys. Um, we do get Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus and the Cajun Argentinosaurus now, a few other weird ones in the the world, but they aren't making all of the different... I mean, to be fair, a lot of sauropods, quote, look the same. They don't, but the idea is that if you're a toy maker... The names kids are going to buy are going to be the ones they know, like Brachiosaurus, etc. But anyway, so as far as neighbors go, 
this guy shares his environment with Neovenator. Neovenator, the new hunter, um, is an Allosaurus descendant type of animal, a uh, relative Allosaurus. This is a Jurassic World figure. I did a video already on this one and this one actually on a Neovenator video. This is Collect A 2020. It's a pretty good model of it actually. And so these guys are contem contemporary predators. And you're saying, wait a minute, how can you have two large predators? Well, very simply put, just like in North Africa, where we have Spinosaurus and his, his cousin Spinosaurus and his cousin Carcharonathosaurus, one is eating more red meat, one is eating more fish and red meat. They have, again, niche partitioning, different environments, uh, different, different jobs in the environment, right? Uh, there are other predators that we have fragments of, like oviraptorids, uh, conflictinates, little small things like that. But there is this is the first time I'm mentioning this in this in a sense. This is uh, Eo tyrannus. It is the uh, earliest, one of the earliest, at least in England, the earliest known or Europe uh, tyrannosaur relative. This figure is uh, who, who made it? Let's see. This is 2010 collect day. And so I'm surprised Jurassic World has not made an Eovenator. Sorry, a Eo Tyrannus figure, and so uh, this is a just it's just like an offshoot of Tyrannosaurus evolution, kind of a neat little guy there. And so I've mentioned it before, like Callan's videos, but the, these guys are your predators in the environment, right? And so they are sharing the environment. What are they hunting of other than the fish and crocodiles, etc.? Well, there's an iguanodon. This is a Jurassic World iguanodon. I'm going to use the 2018 Safari as a scientific model. And so these are obviously this guy is eating this. This is this is not. We're pretty sure about that, right? Another example of this is the 2018 Metallosaurus, which is like an iguana, but smaller. So my only analogy would be, imagine like a like a wildebeest and a gazelle. And if you know mammals, they are both undulates, hoofed animals in Africa, but one's bigger, one's smaller. They have different lifestyles somewhat, different kinds of plants that you're eating. So that's what you're seeing happening there, as well as the famous by uh, walking with dinosaurs fame, uh, Polacanthus, so is a relative relative of the Ankylosaurus, and this particular model is a 2003 Collect A, and so this guy is really well known from the Walking Dinosaurs series. And finally, I have here my only examples of hips, this is a 2012 made in China Collect A, uh, Hypsilophodonts. Now these guys are like uh, little antelope, like tiny little herbivores running around. And so we have essentially these, as, as, you know, the main herbivores. There are sauropods again. There are other carnivores in the environment. But these are the major players. And so I say Isle of Wight. It's a very popular, well-known spot in paleontology in England. Uh, what's really important about it is that it's been, people have been going there for over 200 years almost <laughs> looking for fossils. So for them to find something so in the 2000s like this, that's kind of a big deal, actually. Um, people often think that if you are digging in a spot, there's nothing new there. Uh, there are some paleontology discoveries that come from going into a museum's collection and opening the drawers and something that they may have dug up in a you know 20 years ago, 100 years ago, and thought like put it with the other things. No one actually scanned it or did a lot of prep work. You look at it and go, oh, this is a new species. This, that's happened before many many times actually. And so that's what. But in this case, they were looking on the actual site that's been heavily explored, and they still found something because every year. It rains, for one, and the raining erodes and strips away layers. I've been on paleontology digs where uh, we're scouting, walking around, and we'll see some bone fragments. And I'm like, dinosaur bone, let's get that. And they're like, no, it's not worth our time. We're looking for something bigger. And they just said that ro erode away, right? And so the idea here is uh, it just happened this year or this th that year in the 2000s. Enough eroded away where these two bones are pretty near exposed. Now, as far as its relatives go, Ceratosuchotops, cer I want to say Ceratosuchotops. Uh, this guy, I like the little horns, that's kind of what they're implying. They found that part right here over the eye. And so, again, uh, if I didn't give you a good look at this thing, this is it. Oh, and it... All right, all right. The legs do that, all the stuff. The arms do this. They actually can go like that. It's like, it's like it's going down a slide, I don't know. Um, and... Yeah, we're going to put you down now. So closest relative actually is the, so in Spinosaurus world, there are two major branches, the Baryonyx branch and the Spinosaurus branch. So the close, so this guy is in the Baryonyx branch. Its closest relative is actually the Niger Africa Sukumimus, this guy here. So here's the Jurassic World version, snappy, snappy. Here's a nice scientific model from 
2000. Oh, the name is kind of, it's oh. So this guy has these kind of neat scales on the model and it makes the words and letters look weird. This is Safari 2014. And so this is like a really, really good model of like, this is, I think I'm pretty sure I use this as my picture on my website for Baryonyx. And so um, this guy is his close, closest relative. So how do you determine that? You look at the actual anatomy, the bones we have of both specimen, you can pair them and see the similarities. You say, well, I know they're not the same species. Well, in many cases, they are from slightly different times, different parts, because the early Cretaceous has six divisions of it. And if you care a lot about this in great detail, like nerd I am, um, on my website, jurassicjames.com, I have, if you put jurassicjames.com, like forward slash Cretaceous, I think, I have a page on Cretaceous and it has the, the 12 subdivisions. There's six in late Cretaceous, six in early, and have these 12 divisions, how they're named, and kind of what animals are there. If you click on it, you'll go into a page where I can show you the toys or critters from that time frame that are in toy form. Now, that with the plug over, also subscribe and ring the bell. So the idea is that this these guys are close to relatives. The other relative it has is one that's far more well known, and it's called, of course, Baryonyx. And Baryonyx made famous in the Jurassic World franchise, seen here. Uh, there's a this is a Jurassic World figure, of course. This one is the where's your name? 2008 Collect A. And so this one is a Collect A model. It's one of the bigger ones, actually. Well, bigger for this species for that model so baryonyx is one that we have a lot more of a skeleton so it's th these guys are pretty well known so the baryonyx branch of the spinosaurid group now the spir spir oh, sorry the family spinosaurid there's a baryonyx scene the fa subfamily right the spinosaurus itself falls under here is the jurassic world spinosaurus a giant hulking beast based on information from 2001 or 2000, I think. Here's the more modern, or clear, closer to more modern discovery based on uh, Dr. Uh, Ibram Nazar's finds in Morocco. And so Spinosaurus, the, the scientific model versus Jurassic Park model, there's a slight difference, I think. Um, I can't quite see it. So if you go, this is from North Africa. So Spinosaurus is found in Egypt and Morocco. And there's Spinosaurus aegypticus, which was discovered in 18, or at least dug up in 1819 by Ernst Strummer, and that one is the one that we think of from Egypt. Egypticus is a species name. Moroccoensis, Spinosaurus Egypticus, Spinosaurus Moroccoensis, essentially, right? Different species, same genus. Uh, we have in Brazil, a dinosaur called Irritator. And every one of these I've done a video on already, so you can go look it up. My, I think I was, I'm going to put on the end the link to the Spinosaurus uh, uh, playlist. And so we have here 2011 Collect Day. So I, I like Collect Day because they, they make a lot of unusual species. So here's the Jurassic World version. Here's a science version of Irritator from Brazil. Yes, he's very upset. Uh, so in Southeast Asia, we have these last two. This one is a Collect A 2014. So Ithiovanates were meeting fish hunters, this guy here, so known for its this dip in a sail, right? And so this is one from Southeast Asia, as well as the even more or somewhat, ooh, okay, you're not going to stand at all. The more fragmented Samosaurus uh, here, which is just like teeth. If I remember correctly from the video, it's like teeth. Uh, there's, a, yeah, the button there, yeah. And so these are, in Spinosaurus, Sporid, and they, in general, are southern being South America, Africa, Southeast Asia, right? Uh, the baryonics are usually northern with the exception of Sucomimus. And so finding the fragments we have of this one aren't, it, you know, so it's like, how do you know and all that? It's enough parts there and given what is found and what we know from other specimen, we have an idea how it works. Now, could there be a possibility that we dig it up and it has this giant tail club or whatever? Yes, but in general, no, this is, we're looking at what it should be, but again, keep on digging. And with that being said, that is the high point. That's the focus here. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week.